Okay, I think I'm live. Hi there. I'm looking down right now because I'm checking to see that I'm actually live on everywhere. How's everybody doing today? Well, we were all saying, woo, it's been so crazy warm. I think that that part of the year is officially over now. And the freezing part is about to start because it was really brisk this morning. And it's kind of crispy out there right now, but it's really beginning to feel like fall. Hey, thanks, Sheila. Thanks for letting me know. Can you hear me? Am I sounding all right? Because I can't hear anything. So I hope everyone's been having a good day. You know, it's that time of year when everything is both hectic and super crazy and then you know pandemic we got everything going on right now i hope you guys like my new setup i've been working on it today so i'll have a nice cozy spot to come live to you from so for anyone who doesn't know my name is lisa i'm the owner of a knit sheep yarns in mount laurel new jersey and i've got a couple of announcements and a really special thing to tell you about. So, let me get started. My first announcement is we are going to go fully virtual until the end of the year. That means that until the new year sometime, and I'm not even sure when, um, we're not going to really be having people in the store. We're going to be doing our uh, shopping appointments as virtual appointments where it's launching virtual classes and we're even going to be doing help se sessions and our social stuff as virtual. I put a, a blog post up about it so if you want all the details it's on the blog and I also put it in our newsletter so if you really want to keep up with what we're going what we have going on do visit our website and subscribe to our newsletter because that, that's where you get the latest information. Uh, how you can order stuff that you see today. I'll be coming live more often as a matter of fact, just to show you what's going on in the store and how you can order things is, oh, you know, I, I'm not a super technical person, but every once in a while I find something I love. So I found out that I could put a little QR code on my screen and if you take a picture of that with your phone I don't even think you have to actually take the picture if you just scan it with your phone the little black and white thing in the jig there in the corner <laughs> it's all backwards to me well it's over there somewhere um, that will give you a link right to our website and you'll be able to find all the things I've been talking about. So I'm just gonna leave that floating up there in the corner of the screen. And what we're doing about delivery is that we're shipping right now and we can also do curbside pickups. So uh, let's get on to the main event of what everybody's here for, the pretty, pretty yarn. So the first thing I wanna show you is something a little unusual. Most of us love wool, we love alpaca, we we're really familiar with it, we use it a lot. I'm showing today a beautiful 100% silk yarn. It's from BC Gone and it's called Tussa Tweed. Let me see if I hold it up by the light. Yeah, you can see the colors nicely. I have six colors in BC Guard, and it is a genuine tweed yarn. See all the little slubs? That is right up there in the yarn. So it's not like little pops of color, it's actual bits of silk.
Now, tussle silk is silk harvested from the cocoons of wild moths, not um, silk butterflies. So they wait until the moths actually emerge and then they harvest the cocoon and the moths go away and live their happy lives as moths. You get these beautiful little slobs that are variegated. And can you see the sheen? Now that is a natural sheen of the silk. That's just what silk does on its own. When you wash this, you can machine wash it, but they do recommend that you do it with similar colors just in case, you know, the color runs or something. But you can wash it and lay it flat to dry. If it does lose its sheen, they recommend that you give it a little swish in water with a little vinegar in it, and that will bring the sheen back. That's just part of Silk's nature. Now, Silk is interesting. How does it feel? It is smooth, it's cool to the touch almost. And it's light. So those qualities all translate into the garment that you make out of this. And silk is a funny thing. Air gets trapped between the fibers and it kind of lets you stay at a steady state in temperature. So it keeps you cool in the summer and it keeps you warm in the winter. Tessa Silk retails for $22.50 a skein, and it's a fingering weight, and it's 50 gram skeins, which is 273 yards per skein. And look at how the color just takes so richly. That's just kind of magnifique. I've been having a little fun exploring how to do different things. So there's the name of it is BC Garn Tessa Tweed, and it is $22.50 a skein. But you get nearly 300 yards per skein. So a couple of skeins translate into garments pretty easily. I do have one, actually, I have two to show you. First one we're going to look at is called Pineapple Smoothie, which I think is just delightful. Now I'm going to have to take down my cute little QR code. So this is my first time playing around with the banners in a QR code, so I'm going to remove the banner and remove the QR code. It's getting a little bit in the way, but I can always put it back. Come in a little bit closer on that for you. Now, although the yarn is slubby, you're still getting a beautiful, smooth fabric. Look at that. And the nice thing with silk, if you do any kind of open work, you're not going to have to block the daylights out of it to get that those holes to open they're pretty much going to be set as you knit them or crochet them. Take a look at the back. Now this particular sweater, it takes six to nine skeins of Tessa Tweed and it's done on a US three needle. And this particular pattern, it goes from a 37-inch bust to a 57-inch bust. 
And I could see this easily being a three to, depending on where you are, perhaps four season sweater. And the pattern's available on the BC Garn website, on the, excuse me, on the Kelborn Women's website. They are the people who distribute BC Garn in this country. The other one I wanted to take a look at is called Rhymeade. These names are so fun. It's actually done in this color. Sorry, I gotta share the screen on that again. There we go. Share. Look at Rhyme Aid. Oh, there we are. Poor thing, I just cut off her head. Now it's a totally different style of sweater. Still casual, that really nice ballet neck. Okay. And that little bit of detail going around the front just adds a little oomph. But it's textured and soft and it's going to drape beautifully because that is what silk does. And they've repeated that little line of overwork on the sleeve, on the front, and on the back. The designer on this one is Yoko Hada. And this is the actual colorway. It's called Spring Green. When I stop the screen show, you'll be able to see it better. And this one, depending on the size, will take between five and seven skeins. And this sweater ranges from a 37 inch chest to a 61 inch chest. And it's actually designed to be worn with six to eight inches of ease. So it's a really, it's a loose fitting. It would be comfortable any time of year. Because silk is great to, on its own or for layering. Okay, and that is the spring one. Let's see if I can get it in a place where the light's not gonna blow the color out. Yeah. I don't have good light for that right now. But if you check on the website, you'll be able to see really nice pictures that are very true to the color. Now, if you're working with silk, what I would recommend is um, probably a wood needle, you know, just to avoid a lot of slipping around. I would not use my fast, fast needles. Like if you have like a set of Addy Clicks or something, those might actually be too slick to use with the, the silk. It's not as slippery as alpaca, but it can be a little bit slippery. So in keeping with my theme today, I wanted to show some yarns that had texture, but not necessarily all the same texture. So I got another one out. This is also a silk. This is Ella Ray Rustic Silk. Now it's a 100% silk yarn. These are 100 gram skeins though. And I don't know if you can see, ah, here it is. They're all just subtly variegated, but notice the sheen. That is just a natural property of silk. It shines. So when the light hits it, it just has a very subtle glow to it. They're 100 gram skeins, like I said, 437 yards, and it's also another fingering weight silk. And they recommend that you use a US 1 to 3 needle, or if you're crocheting, a B to D hook. Another interesting thing about silk is that it really takes color. So when you have a strong color, that's what you get. You get POW.
the variegation is very soft, very subtle, but there's a lot of contrast between the lights and the darks. And here it is in just a creamy natural blue. It's getting a little blown out there. Let's see what happens if I turn this light off. My forward light is blowing this out. Oh, okay. If I turn it to the side a little bit, that's better. But I just want to get give you a look at how subtle the colors are. So you have a lot of tones going on in here. This golden one. Now this has golds and browns and tans. What I liked about these was they kind of give the impression of one overall color, but when you really look at it, you see what's really happening there. Let me get this over here for the moment. What I have to show you now is this shawl. This is the Madeline shawl. Now this is definitely a year round shawl because like I said, of the nature of silk, it tends to keep the body, it's the, one of the most breathable fibers and it tends to keep your body in a steady state. So you'll be cooler in this in the summer if you just want something to keep the sun off you. And warmer if you want to wrap it around your neck for the winter. It's a triangular shaped shawl. And you use two skeins. And the pattern does come free with the purchase of the skeins of yarn. Now the pattern is charted, but it's a simple repeat. But I think once you get it down, you'll just have no trouble with it at all. Look at that. It's got a 79 inch wingspan. And it is 29 inches from neck to point. So it's a, it's a good size shawl. And it's one of those pieces that if you wanted to make it bigger, you could just keep on going. And it just styles so easily because it drapes. That is what silk does. It's comfortable around your neck. And if this is touching you, there's no tickling, no prickling, no itchy. So how would I pair it? I would pair it so that there's contrast. So like I love this pink and green one. So it's going to give you an overall impression of pink and green. But there is so much variegation happening in here. I'm gonna have to set up a yarn cam so I can just put these like right underneath so you can really see them. Now this one, they paired with a white. So if you want high contrast, something like this purple with the natural would be great. Or even the blue with the natural. But look what happens when I bring the purple and the natural together. You'd be getting a lower contrast, but they still work together because within this blue strand skein, you have some of that purple too. So the colors just play together wonderfully. How about this for low contrast? 
but you still have enough difference in value that it's going to show up. And what you have is rippling color like that. I think that. I think this is actually my favorite. This over here. That is comfortable. <laughs> now I had everything all hung up and ready to go, and you see now that I'm done with it, I'm just tossing it to the side. <laughs> so, anybody work with silk before? Do you like it? Was it? an easy thing to knit with. For me, I liked it because it kind of just spools right out of the ball when I wind it. And it flows beautifully. And mom did, I would, you know, I wish I had thought of this. Mom did uh, a scarf in this yarn in Tunisian and she really enjoyed working it as a Tunisian, you know, in a Tunisian project. last yarn I want to show you guys today when I when I first put it up for you you're gonna be like oh I've been there done that but you haven't been quite to this one this is Sirdar Alpine and it is just what it looks like it is a delicious soft fun fur but it is not like that awful fun fur that we went through in the I think, I think it was like 90s. Fun fur just took over for a while there. This feels like petting a bunny. Now, I have it in natural colors, and I have it in colors totally not found in nature. So I got fantasy colors, and what I like to call my critter colors. Kind of wolfy, lynxy type of color. It is a bulky, and they do suggest, oh, what would you like to see? What would you like to see, Sheila? Oh, mom's Tunisian crochet scarf? I will put up a picture of it, because I, it, she really likes wearing it, and it came out just beautiful. Do you remember what the pattern name of it was, Mom, or did you just make it up? I made it up. She made it up. Sorry. Mm -hmm. <laughs> There's no pattern for it yet. I'm working on her. It's a sampler of different stitches. Yeah, she just was practicing different stitches, and she decided to make them up into the scarf. But when I get home, I'll take a picture of it and put it up on um, Facebook and Instagram. But... I know, you see the fur, it's like, oh, I don't know about that fun fur. Is it hard to knit with or crochet with? Absolutely not. It, it does not matter whether or not you knit or crochet this yarn because you can't see stitches when you work with it. So all you see is fur. Now, this is a sample that I got when I bought the yarn. This is a 16, there is no pattern for this because it's so simple, it's like nobody needs a pattern for this. It's the 16 stitch cowl. You cast on 16 stitches, you knit or crochet until you're tired of it, and then you sew the ends together and you get this really, and I wish you could touch it with the screen. It actually feels like I've wrapped, you know, bunnies around my neck. It is cozy and comfortable and super duper soft. So if you wanted to make a gift for someone that loves, loves, loves softness around their necks, this would be the thing. And it's actually going to keep you warm. It's 100% polyester. It is $6 a ball. And on a US, I think they recommend 10 or 11 needle. No, it's actually a US 15, 10 millimeter. This takes two balls of Alpine. And look at that. You can't tell me I'm not wearing fur. 
And like I said, it doesn't matter whether you knit this or crochet it. If you wanted to make the same thing as a crochet project, make 16 chains, actually 17 chains and then single crochet every row. When I did mine, I did it to 36 inches. But if you wanted to double loop it, I'd go a little bit longer, maybe 40 inches. Sew the two ends together. And let me tell you a joke. I, you know, I wanted to be all literally, I was like, oh yeah, I'm going to do a provisional cast on and then kitchen the ends together. Don't even bother with that foolishness. You can't see the stitches. So when you sew it together, you can't see where you sewed it together either because it's just this luscious, delicious fur. Now, what's the difference? How can I make a difference in this? Now, when I did this, I happen to be a pretty loose crocheter. So when I used a size 15 needle, I got something that was kind of Swiss cheesy. It was kind of holy because my gauge tends to run loose anyway. So I made one myself. 16 stitches and I went down to a US 11 needle. And I actually like the texture of this one better. It's it's thicker and fuller. And like I said, because I tend to knit loosely, I got a, a better fabric. I got a fabric that didn't have holes <laughs> in it. But you can't see what kind of stitches I use. There's no point in doing any kind of fancy stitch work. You can't see where I sewed it together. <laughs> so just knit it or crochet it. Mom, can you do me a favor? Mm -hmm. My pom-pom in the fur is on the cart. Can you just give me the, the fur pom-pom? Because I want to show you a piece that I crocheted. Now I had a smidgen of yarn left over from another project and that's that's exactly the thing you want it to look like. It looks like fur. Only it should be hanging on the front of the cart. It may be on the side of the cart. You see it? It's a pom pom. Ah, oh, thank you. So I had a little bit left over from another project. So I decided to crochet a pom pom. Now, what is the difference between these two pieces? It literally doesn't matter. I just uh, crocheted a sphere and I stuffed it. So now I have a handmade fur pom-pom. And I got the pattern. It's the faux fur, the faux fur pom-pom. And it's a free Ravelry download. And it calls for nine to 11 yards. So just the tail end of the yarn that I had left is what I used for my, my um, and it kind of doesn't matter where you place your hook if you're crocheting because you can't see the stitches. So you just stick your hook in wherever it goes. It's the easiest, simplest crochet you want to do. But you can also easily crochet the cowl. Now the other thing I thought about doing with this yarn, and I haven't done it yet, I think I might do it for myself this winter, is I want to make some fur cuffs that I can put on the ends of my jacket. Look at that. Now that would just make your same old jacket feel luxurious. You could also do a fur collar that you can just move from coat to coat. Love that. And it not only looks like fur, it feels like fur. So that is Ciudad Alpine. Put a QR code back. So like I said, if you take a picture of that QR code, that will take you straight to the website. The last piece I want to show you, this is called the Laura Hat. And it's named after the character from Dr. Zhivago. So what I did with this hat 
You see how I was telling you, you could put a fur collar or a fur cuff on anything you wanted to do. Now you can't tell whether I knit or crocheted this cuff, but how you start the hat is you start at the brim. You can knit or crochet for eight inches and then switch to another yarn. Now this happens to be um, ultra wool, ultra wool, I think it's ultra wool worsted. I'm gonna say it was ultra, ultra wool worsted. I don't remember at this point. I don't know. It was ultra wool VK. I was right the first time. Go me. Oh, but I held it double. I was like, this looks very chunky. But in order to get it to be, to be chunky, I just held two strands of DK. Oh, oh, you could definitely do the entire hat in front of her. Absolutely. Look at that. Now, my hair is a little poofy today. <laughs> but it's a really fun hat. But you could do the whole hat. You could do a fur beret, which would be a lot of fun. You could do just the brim. Or you could make a fun little pom-pom. I don't know where I put mine down, but it's here somewhere. If you have any leftover, oh, pom-poms aren't for this hat, but there you go. Cute, fun pom-pom. Oh, absolutely. You, I would, I could see a couple of different styles of hat you could do in the fur. I mean, like completely. And to do it, what you would want to do is you can translate any hat pattern into the fur. Just look for a hat pattern that recommends a bulky yarn. So this generally on a US, on a size N crochet hook, you probably get about eight and a half stitches to the inch. So I would look for a bulky weight hat pattern. I would be surprised if you needed more than one or two. These are 50 gram skein and it's 36 yards per skein. But like I said, this yarn is so bulky that this whole cowl knit on the US 15 took two skeins. If you wanted to do an entire fur blanket, you could do a fur throw with 10 skeins and a US uh, 15 needle or a size N hook. And it would work up actually quite quickly. Oh, definitely. You, I think you'd really, really have a good time with that. I have my notes I've taken a quick look at because if I don't, I just start just flitting around. I might start chasing squirrels. Who knows what will happen? <laughs> so there is something else I wanted to tell you guys about. I have um, put together something I'm calling a box of stewed the citrus soul. You know, 2020 has been a year that will not quit. I don't know what it's going to do next. And I don't know about you, but I have literally gone through every emotion that I have this year. So I wanted to put together a box that you can either gift yourself or give to someone really, really deserving that will soothe their soul. There's gonna be a project in it that's worked with the softest, loftiest yarn. It's gonna be an easy project that is not, it'll be something that's very meditative and relaxing. There's gonna be something to sip something that will make you smile every day of the year and a little bit of flair. 
So it is like my first mystery box. You can check it out on our website. I did a blog post about it on the blog. If you click our QR code, oh, look at that, I'm pointing in the right direction. There we go. Yeah, I can't, I can't do it. I'm, I'm backwards to me. <laughs> um, it will take you right to our website. The boxes are $125 a box, and I'm only selling them for the next, I think, seven days. So I'm opening, I opened up sales, I think, yesterday. And we also have a, a limited number of them. So do check it out. What I'm hoping is that you'll really like it. I think it will be something to soothe the sticker so. Uh, I will be mailing the boxes out on December 7th. And if you want to pick up your box in person, you can do curbside pickup between December 11th and December 14th so that you will definitely have your box before the holidays. So, if you want to keep up with us, do consider subscribing to our newsletter and join us here on November 28th, that is Small Business Saturday, because I'm having a showcase of New Jersey dyers. If you want to take a sneak preview and see who's coming, see what their style is like, it's going to be Molly Girl Yarns, A Girl in Her Wool, and Free Bunny Designs. And I haven't announced this anywhere yet, so you guys are going to be the first to hear Anyone who orders from Molly Girl, Three Bunnies Design, or on the Girl in Her Wool will also receive a $10 gift certificate to a knit sheath yarns that you can use during the month of December. Oh, it should be fun. We're going to have them chat. We'll show the samples. It's going to be a really fun afternoon. So I will be giving you all the details about that. Um, on in Tuesday's newsletter. So if you're not um, in the newsletter yet, subscribe today and you'll get in, you'll start getting your newsletter. Is there anything that anybody needs to ask? Any questions, comments? Alrighty then. I will see you guys next time. Thank you so much for spending this time with me this afternoon. Everyone have a great day and have a good Thanksgiving. If you don't see you soon. until then. Bye everybody. Have a great day.